pup. Clever girl. Clever girl. Yes, clever girl. Clever bear. You're not to bring puppy astray. Yes, you clever pup. Yes, you're getting good recall, except not with your name. Just being called pup, 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 pup. Yes. Yeah, and you're good at calling to your name, too. Oh. 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 You be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the field fencing for the horses and the swallows are all swooping very low. Usually that's a sign of rain, but I don't think we're due to get rain. They're swooping low over the manure because there's lots of insects there. I've just given the horses a new batch of feeding, so I'm setting up fencing for the next few days. Some people are saying, why am I grazing so tight? And I'll tell you why. Because I want clover to grow in this field. White clover is a very low clover. And I want it to grow here, so I need the horses to graze tight. And it's partially to resuscitate the soil because in this field, it's very shallow and the there's a lot of moss growing in here. So I need to rebalance the pH. In rebalancing the pH, I need the grasses to grow with deep roots and the white clover helps feed the grasses from the top so they can seed and grow. Here you can see just in this area there's one, two, there's one, two, three, four, five different species of grasses all with varying levels of root structure and they're all being fed by the clover. So <laughs> look you silly kitty, look at you. You're up on the larch tree. Are you gonna come all the way out? <laughs> yes. And look at the grass growing underneath the larch tree. This is what biodiversity is and farming the way I do means that grass does grow under trees. So lots of biodiverse varieties. Here's another variety that wasn't lower down. And see they all, well at the moment a lot of them are blooming at the same time. Which is why people who have allergies um, are having a hard time at the moment because of the pollen. So tight, tight grazing like this enables the white clover to establish and grow and flower. So this area here I shall uh, gets cut off from all livestock so that the clover can rejuvenate. And if I was to walk to the other side of that electric fence, the back electric fence, you'd see clover is coming up again. But it's basically to make it so that clover, the white clover, not the purple clover, I'll want purple clover in here later, but the main program of grazing is to establish the white clover. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. And this is to combat uh, the mossiness of this field and rebalance the pH. So that is why I am not doing the kind of mob grazing with cattle where you're interested in leaving stuff behind and trample effect. I'm trying to get the pH in the soil rebalanced with the root structures of the grasses by using white clover to feed the grasses to establish 
their deep roots. So that is why I'm grazing so tightly for these beautiful things. Now what Puppy Thistle is doing is chewing on a piece of ryegrass. I don't have a huge amount of ryegrass anymore in my fields. But this is ryegrass. This is the really old fashioned ryegrass because the seed heads aren't tight together or opposite. They're spread out along the stem. So this is the old fashioned ryegrass which um, all the hybrid grasses came from, or a lot of the hybrid grasses came from. So there's a little bit of puppy flora biology. Here's another ryegrass. And here's another ryegrass. So we have a series of different ryegrasses here. Not right, puppy thistle. My sister's named the puppy thistle. Thistle! Good girl! Yes! Good girl! Yes! Good girl! Now here, where the horses were grazing yesterday, you can see a bit of the moss. There's a bit of the moss. It, when you're far away from it, it all looks green. But when you come down, you can see that it's moss. Now in this particular area, there's no clover. So if we walk over, this is the back fence of the grazing with all the manure to fertilize the soil and the dung beetles and the insects to feed the birds all living off the dung. If we walk back through time in the grazing of the horses to the first area that I had the horses grazing, well, this isn't even the first area. But here, you can see the clovers are beginning to come up. Just there and there. So, there's goodness me. Ferocious play. What are you all roaring about? Ferocious play. Poor bear. And the cat's still with us. But when you get further back in time, you can see more, there's more clover. Those are dandelions. This is um, plantain. And it just gets more and more in here, come back even further in grazing time. And you can see clovers are flowering again. Close to the ground, but you go further back in time of grazing and you can see the grasses are now growing. You can see the spots where the horses urinated and then that's where their manure is or they urinated and the manure. But see again, you can see clovers are now blooming again and growing up out of the soil. And there's no, there's a lot less moss in this area. Yeah, there's thistles but there's a lot less moss and I'm trying to balance the pH of the soil so that there's less moss and more diversity of plant life on top of the soil. So you can see, yeah, there's, these are the little daisies. There's more dandelion. Over here, there's more clovers. So this area now will be left for a good long period of time. Nobody will graze in here to let the plants rejuvenate and farm for themselves the phosphates they need within the soil to grow healthy. So it's all about trying to do it as biologically natural as possible. Bear, what you doing? Yes, is a very annoying puppy.